Well, good morning, everybody. This morning, we're getting rid of this bad boy and pulling her around for a day. And it's time to drop her off with her rightful owner here in Toronto. So, I stayed in Pickering, Ontario, which is a little further past Toronto. It's the closest parking to where my customer was. I was going to park on the street right outside there, but when I got there, there were no parking signs everywhere. So, here we are. I'm going to drive about a half hour back to where they are and bring this Genie Aerial Lift Truck. Is that what it's called? I don't know. It's four wheel drive, though. That's pretty cool. All right, let's get going. This guy parked right in front of me here. He's bringing fuel to the Petropass fuel station here. Let's see if I can sneak out past him. Another guy right beside me on my right, so it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I think I can do it. Cause I'm a professional. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're good, we're good. No problem at all. So, like I was saying, Pickering, Ontario is where we are. We gotta go into Scarborough, which is Toronto to me. This place here uh, doesn't have a 24 hour uh, store, so I don't like stopping here in wintertime, but it's not wintertime, so let's not talk about that. Wintertime, I like to park at stops that have 24 hour uh, stores just in case my truck stops running that I can go and stay warm somewhere. Just in case, you know, I've had a few misfortunes in the past, I've learned my lessons. I'm pulling a tri axle step deck behind me right now, as you saw, or you might have seen as I when I showed you the, the load there before. 300 meters, turn right on, Bailey Street, RR22. So what that means is that my, uh, my trailer has three axles, meaning I can carry more weight. I can carry much more than the usual tandem, which is a two axle. Like this guy's meters, got a tandem. Turn right on, Bailey Street, RR22. And that's good because my next load that I'm picking up later today, she's going to be heavy. We're pulling heavy steel from here in Ontario out to Alberta in the oil fields. It's a good load. The only downside is I'm going to have to shave my face. I'll tell you more about that later. opening up the gate for me here. Perfect timing I got here just as they all got here. It's good. I don't like wasting time. It's good. Looks like they got a few other machines here already. Why not one more? I wonder where they're gonna want me. There's a dock over there in front of me. I'm guessing they're gonna want me to go around and back up against that thing. That's what I would guess. This is crazy. Very small yard for a, a big truck. Maneuver my way through here. I'm not going to 
hit anything. I'm gonna watch my height so that I'm not hitting one of their booms here. Mud yard, of course. Of course, I was hoping to get my feet all muddy this morning. You'll see the dock right away here. Right there. I'm gonna back up against that thing. There she was. That's mine right there. They left the beacon on. Whoopsie. I'll have to let them know. Whoops a daisy, as they say. Right? So look at this. Oh, that's a bright sun. Oh, ball of fire. All I got are my tarps. I'm gonna need those for my next load because I have to tarp that steel. All empty, I just gotta clean everything up. Got my straps, my equipment here. And apparently, all I've gotta do is just go to the gate over there and honk, and they're gonna let me out of here. Any excuse to use the air horn? <laughs> I'm still a kid, I know. I'd like to go now, please. Come on. There it is. Thank you very much. No idea where they are. They just told me to honk. I don't see anyone in any of the windows or anything. Maybe they're watching me on the camera. Anyways, it's off to our pickup. Let's go get our next load. Well, a little excitement for today. We're going right past downtown Toronto. I've never been down this road before and I've never been this close to downtown Toronto. I can see the CN Tower off to the right there. Can you see it? We're gonna go around the corner to the right here right away. We're pretty much right along the lake almost uh, as soon as we turn right. We're headed straight to the lake now. Look at this weird building. The taller one right in front of us, just a little to the right of the road right now. Wait till we get closer. Oh, I gotta get out of this lane. One kilometer, keep to the right on Don Valley Parkway. Wait, yeah, I didn't, yeah, I gotta stay in this lane. This building right here, just off to the right? What kind of weird architecture is that? Sure don't build buildings like they used to, tell you what. What is that? Looks like a Lego building building made of Lego. What? All right, Toronto. In you do you. Meters, keep to the right on Dot Valley Parkway. Sorry if I'm not talking loud enough. I keep forgetting to talk louder because I'm not using that big mic that was giving us all the audio problems last week. So I got to talk a little louder now. I forget. All right. Well, well, where are we going here? What are we doing? You guys want some music over this? You don't have to listen to my voice the whole time. What do you want? Gardenier Expressway. Continue on this road for 14 kilometers. Really? There's the CN Tower. You know when the CN Tower was built, it was the tallest building on Earth? That's right, we're pretty special. That was quickly surpassed, but hey, for a moment we had it. We had the title. It's that big pointy building there. Excuse me, I don't know what lane to be in. I'm going to pick this one. Excuse me. Oh, good. That lane was ending. Look at this. Look at this. Look at all the people. Look at all. Wow. I've always wanted to come through downtown. Sorry, I'm a country boy. For those of you who are new, I live like out in the middle of nowhere, Manitoba. So when I come to downtown Toronto, this is pretty exciting. I'd rather not be here in a 75 foot big rig, but here we are, living the dream. Look at this place. The buildings are all so interesting. They, they, they all look like Lego buildings. You notice that? They look like they're made out of Lego. But this one is just off here to the left. This sort of like glass tower here. Can you imagine what the rent must be in there? Or if they're condos, how expensive those condos are? I'm just gonna throw a number out there. I bet you they're like four or five thousand dollars a month. Oh, let's go with four. Let's be a little conservative. Four thousand dollars. This is a very expensive area to live in here. 
from what I've heard. I mean, I've never lived here. Can you imagine Trucker Josh living in this mess? Oh, I'd be so lost. I just, I just stay in my little apartment. That's not true. I love cities. I always think cities are exciting because there's always something going on, right? There's always something to do. And it's always just like five minutes away. Everything's five minutes away. Where I live, if I want to go get groceries, it's a whole afternoon trip. You got to plan it out. And you don't go unless you got another couple of things to do also, because then you make it worthwhile. Wow. I can't believe the freeway goes right through downtown here. Hashtag impressed, Toronto. Hashtag impressed. Now all you got to do is win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> hey, you can't win everything. You can't have it all. You're a big fancy city. You can't have it all. Here's Rogers Center off to the right here. Uh, that's where the Blue Jays play, I believe, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Torontonians. Yeah, there's a sign right there. Toronto Blue Jays. It's our one Major League Baseball team. No, wait, we have another one in Montreal, don't we? One of our, it's one of our Major League Baseball teams they play here, right downtown. Super cool. I bet you there's more people living in this condensed area than in all of Manitoba. I bet you anything. This, this, since we hit these big buildings in this clip, I bet you we've passed more people than live in my entire province. And everybody is on lockdown right now. Well, not quite lockdown, they're on quarantine. If you're watching this in the future, uh, COVID-19 is making its way across the planet right now and we're all currently on essential travel only. And a lot of people are quarantined in their little uh, boxes in the sky here. But hey, man, they sure got a good view, eh? I think it'd be exciting to live in a big city. I don't know if I could do it for long, but if I was ever like super rich one day, I wouldn't mind owning a condo in a big city somewhere, like close by the beach. Maybe have a boat, it'd be awesome. That was our, uh, that was our biggest city, Toronto. Our next biggest city, or one of our other bigger cities is up ahead here. You see another downtown coming up? That's Mississauga, it's a separate city but it's all the same to me. They all blend into each other. That was super exciting, glad we took this road. Well, those of you who live in cities, maybe you find the countryside where I live a little more exciting than I do. When I come to the big cities, I'm always just, I'm always sort of in awe of what, of what humans are able to build and create massive buildings that stand and don't fall over. It's incredible what we've been able to accomplish. And I'm happy to deliver the materials to do it. I'll just drive my truck. You build your fancy skyscrapers, I'll bring you your stuff. I'm happy doing this. I get to see these places. Like if I wasn't a truck driver, I would never get to see this. I'd probably never be in Toronto. I live in Western Canada. That's a long ways away from here. It's at least a a full two day, two and a half day drive from here where I live. Just to the next province. There's ten provinces and three territories. It's a huge country. So wh why would I be here? Maybe for a special trip one day? Yeah, it's... I'm sort of like a paid tourist. Well, boys and girls, believe it or not, take a look at this. This is my load. We're ten foot wide. So uh, we're gonna need to use flags and stuff and oversized load signs. Legally, I'm not required to use my beacons. That's what people have told me. But I, I don't understand why you wouldn't use your beacons, because don't you want people to see you better? Right, anyways. 10 foot wide. Under this tarp is 63,000 pounds of steel. 63,000 pounds of steel, according to the paperwork. That's nuts. Hence the triaxle. I'll show you what it looks like uh, before the tarp's on. There's another load over here. The same thing someone else is picking up, I guess. Take a look at this. This is what 
the big before the tarp was on it. Just those four sheets, 60 some thousand pounds. Why is that strap just sitting there like that? Oh, messy. Not mine. Yeah, this is for someone else. Same load though. It's crazy, just four sheets at a time. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them going to the oil fields. Uh, what they do is they build those huge container drums like that hold like a million barrels of oil. Those huge uh, bins, huge storage containers. That's made out of like hundreds of these sheets put together. And we haul four at a time, 60 some thousand pounds a load. It's crazy. Gravity, I tell you, gravity is crazy. So I've got to put some rug underneath here. Got this right here. Uh, because the corners here are sharp, right? And they'll eat through my tarp on the highway. So that's no good. That's no good. We don't want that. These tarps are expensive. So I'm going to put you guys here on the end of the trailer. And I'm going to quickly put these pieces of rug underneath here on the corner. Never throw out your old rug. Very handy. See? That in there, that protects it. Protects the freight because it's soft and it also protects your tarps. It's best if you can secure it on there, like tie it down with a strap, but uh, I wasn't able to do that this time. So, I'm gonna put that in there. a combination of of straps and chains to tie this down however you feel most comfortable I use a whatever works <laughs> on steel a lot of people like to use chains so that's always nice uh, chains you know aren't gonna break straps you got to worry about breaking but you can do a combination of both a few straps a few chains or you can do just chains it's really up to you but uh, All depends, right? All depends. I always say, the more securement, the better. There's never too many chains and too many straps on a load. Don't, don't let it bother you if people laugh at you because you put too much securement on your load. Who cares? Laugh at them because they didn't put enough. Actually, don't laugh at them. Please go and tell them to put more on so that they don't kill somebody. How about that? stopped at the on route just north of Toronto. I don't know if it's open or not. I mean, people are here, so I'm assuming it's open. I'm hoping Timmy's is open. I don't know. I heard that Tim's closed down all across the country. You know it's bad when Tim's shuts down. So you want to see the load? Here we go. Got my other two tarps up there that I don't need. Here you go. Nice and simple, eh? These straps over the top are just to hold the tarp down so it doesn't flap too much. But... Well, the sun went down on us again. Does that every day. So we have a wide load, so I had to pull over before the sun went totally down. I had to be parked before a half hour after sunset. I think I said before sunset before. 
And according to Google, the sun set at 4, 7.44 p.m., which means I could drive to 8.14, and I think I stopped at about 7.30 or 7.15. Uh, there wasn't any stops from here uh, within the time that I had to stop, so we're here in North Bay, Ontario, and this is where we're going to call it a night and start our day tomorrow. Three long days out to Alberta from here. It's going to be fun. And then we go home for a bit. So that'll be, that'll be awesome. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe.